Today, we're gonna to learn how to make lemonade, how to take some tough situations of low ceiling heights, know their key challenges, and then we're gonna step through some real world design scenarios and figure out how we are able to deal with them using underlying principles. All right, let's go here. First up are challenges. What gets in our way when we are in a venue with low ceilings? First and most obvious one is compromise sight lines. These speakers get in our way, so we put it in the right spot, and of course it's video world that is gonna complain about it, and we can't have them in the right spot. So if we have speakers in the right spot, they're often in sight lines, and that makes us have to move them. If you've done any sort of political gigs, they can't be in camera shots at all. That's a whole other thing, even if there are high ceilings. So all that being said, we often can't have optimal placement because it blocks view to either a screen or LED wall or something like that. We have high range ratios or high level variance. So if you're unfamiliar with a range ratio, that is the ratio of basically from the speaker right here to this little magenta arrow going all the way to the back row versus it throwing to the first row. So this is actually six to one. So this is 80 feet and divide that by six to 13 feet as far as the throw. And speakers, a point source is optimized for a two to one ratio. And we can go up to three or maybe even four to one before we need to enlist other speakers. But all that being said, six to one is way too much to ask of a point source. And we can even see here on the bottom right that uh, it's uh, a 10 dB difference front to back uh, at this frequency of 4K. And it's gonna be even more at low frequencies, right? So that would be a 15 dB level drop at low frequencies. And another challenge is that there's really no time to spread with low range ratio. So we looked at vertical coverage first, and now this is horizontal coverage. This is a wider box, it's 90 degrees, but since the first row comes so quick, it really doesn't have any time to spread out and cover, and so we might need to enlist some help. Next is timing and spill issues. So this is 200 Hertz with this current design of a bunch of different speakers. And we're gonna talk about why this is the right approach of having different zones, but there's a lot of low frequencies going everywhere because we know high frequencies are like a pizza slice. The horn is able to accurately direct them where they need to go, usually starting about 1K and up. And the higher frequency we go, it has an easier time steering it. But once you get below that, things start to balloon out. So we need to manage all of that. Okay, so knowing those issues of sight lines, low range ratio, and spill, how can we start to overcome them? First, we need to position compact speakers as high as you can. So small spaces call for small speakers. That's why I really like Fulcrum Acoustic speakers, specifically their CCX series. And this is Dave Gunnis, the president and founder of the company, talking about their TQ technology in a really cool video. But this CCX series, it is passive cardioid, meaning it is a single amp channel. And because of the way sound flows through the speaker, we're actually getting a cardioid pattern, AKA less low mids off the back of the box. Like I mentioned earlier, we're able to easily steer high frequencies, but as we go lower, if we don't have a big line <laughs> or line array, uh, we don't have much steering in the low frequencies. We still have some with point sources, but once you get below 200, forget about it. So with this, we actually get much less, seven or eight dB low mids less off the back of the box. I like it because it's a single amp channel. There are other manufacturers that have different products that are cardioid, but they actually require additional drivers in the boxes working together with another amp channel. So this is a lot more efficient. They're light and compact. This is a coaxial design. So the high frequency driver lives on the, the low frequency driver in the center. So they're concentric with each other. And that makes lining up the phase response of the two drivers a lot easier because they occupy the same point in space or very close. I also like in this series, you have multiple horn patterns. So you get a 90 by 45, a 120 by 60, a 75 by 75, and a 60 by 45. And that's true with most of the driver sizes. I think there's only two coverage patterns with their eight inch guy, but with the 12 and 15 of this box, you get all four of those. It also has a rotatable horn, so you can put it in weird places and rotate where you need. And like I mentioned, you got an eight inch, 12 inch, 15 inch driver sizes. So you can just scale up the box for the SPL needs. So if you need more, scale up to the 15. If you need a really tight form factor and then choose the driver size you like. Again, really fun to design with. 
This is them in action. This is a little bit higher ceiling that we're gonna be talking about today. They're really cute. They're tucked there at the top. And just to show you the difference in what it takes, uh, so this is the design we looked at at the top here. This is just a single center speaker pointed right here uh, covering this first zone. And this is at its 11 and a half foot trim, which is what we're limited to in that venue. And this is a 90 by 45 speaker. And by getting it up another eight and a half feet, sorry, uh, I can't math right now. Yeah, eight and a half feet, a 20 foot trim, you can see that the pattern's much wider simply because it has time to spread out. And this is at 4K, by the way. So all that being said, getting trim height is really important. So even if just a little extra foot, you can e eke out of it having a small box. And I would say if you are working with an enclosure that's bigger, that maybe has a separate woofer and the tweeter, make sure you get the tweeter higher so it has time to spread out and do that. Moving on, we can subdivide and conquer by using different zones. So this is actually my brother-in-law's church. I talked about it at my uh, church front keynote uh, last year at the conference. And he, this is the original design they had. So it's a QSC 212C sub and then the QSC K12 main. So this is a really long room. And you think, Michael, why are you using a really high ceiling to demonstrate this? Let, let, stay with me here. So these speakers, even though we had about 25 foot of trim, this is still a really high range ratio. We still need to overcome it. This is five to one, not as bad as our six to one earlier, but still rough. So actually looking at the data front to back in prediction, it's a 9 dB difference in the high frequencies and it's 20 dB in low frequencies. So that's, I wanna shoot for less than six dB front to back. So if I can divide this audience, it was a left right setup, but the audience was really narrow. So what if I took one and actually moved it? And this, if I had this front speaker, just worry about this first half of the room, I reduced it to a 2.2 to one range ratio. And then I can now use front fills that were laying around in the back and just take care of the front. So I'm really just being very pragmatic about seeing that this speaker right here can go just worry about this zone put this guy, worry about this zone, and then the front fills right here, just worry about right here, okay? And so now to see everything color-coded and look at, see where it's going, uh, these speakers are now taking care of what's happening right there. And this is what it looks like in the prediction. And I did have to turn the front fill down to scale it for its tiny little zone, even though it's a smaller speaker, it was a CP8 in this instance versus a K12 that's flown, we were able to scale it down. So just thinking about I'm sliding in speakers to fill their, their respective smaller zones. Now let's move to a very recent design that I've been working on that is an actual ceiling. I've got or a low ceiling venue. I've got a 12 foot trim height here, all right? So I worked this up in Fulcrum 1, so Fulcrum Acoustics Design Software, and I just started like, okay, let's just start simple and get some data and start tweaking. So this is their CCX series. This is the CCX 15s. And I just started with their 75 by 75 degree boxes. And just to see what I got, I placed them. So they were splitting the audience down the middle. So this got this half, this got this half, all right? So if I look at that, 4K, a good proxy for coverage, not the end all be all. This is one octave weighting with three dB color change. So in the center, let's call that zero. And that's now minus three to orange, minus six, minus nine, minus 12, minus 15. So someone is going to be sitting here, right where I put this little probe and I don't want a 15 dB difference in the top end. So I need to make some changes. So one thing I can do, knowing that I have multiple coverage patterns is widen out the box. So if I do that, what if we went to 120 by 60 boxes? So I narrowed slightly the vertical coverage pattern, which actually works in our favor since we have a low trim height and I widen it out and this is better. So if I compare the two, you can see that now I'm only going down. This is our reference or zero is the red minus three, minus six, and then barely touching minus nine over here. So a big improvement in my book, but still I wanna see if I can solve these edges. So what if I towed them out just a little bit? So moving back and forth, this is from towing these speakers in and out, and we do get better coverage even in the rear, but I still wanna keep everything within a uh, vast majority of the audience with the plus or minus 60, uh, 
plus or minus 3 dB, which means just two colors. Again, I need to look at all frequencies, not just 4K, but it's a really good proxy for coverage with most speakers. So if I take this, I fiddle with it, and I found that actually doing three across the front, the center being our uh, 120 by 60 boxes, and taking care of its zone right here. And then the side boxes are 90 by 45. So they're taking care of here, here, and really just compartmentalizing and making sure that each of these speakers take care of their little zone. Again, with uh, a low ceiling, this is what we have to do. And you may think, are you gonna drive this all mono? What about stereo imaging? What I would advocate doing is actually doing a left to these speakers and then we'll do right in the middle. So we can do left, right, left. So re effects returns, any ping pong delays, any stereo sources like a key, a Nord or whatever, you can still get some sense of spaciousness and imaging, uh, but it's just not gonna always map to left and to right. But I think it's worth doing it that way. So moving on here, if we want to uh, subdivide, this not only for high frequency speakers or just mains, this is true for subs. So I got back, going back to our first design, this is two cardioid subs. This is the CS21s. I've actually spe specced the, the CS218s for this, but that file's not available yet in Fulcrum, Fulcrum 1, but it's coming. So going here, our coverage is nice here in the front of the room and I actually had them pulled apart a little bit so I can narrow the pattern so I can shoot this long room. But just like I've already placed delay speakers, which are blacked out right now because they're not on, uh, I don't just want to propagate high frequencies and make sure that's clear to the back. I want to make sure I have low frequencies too. So now that I've added this sub, I can see that it is now a much better fit as far as keeping consistency front to back. So you may be asking, why do I not do two subs since it's a similar area? Well, this sub is going to be able to ride on the energy coming from the front. And uh, I'd rather use some of that cost and investment elsewhere and uh, these subs are very efficient. So I feel like this would even have enough headroom for me to get a little bit more out of it if I need to have it compete with those other two subs in the front of the room. All right, manage your spill. So talked about this a little bit already in prior designs, but I went, now move back to the uh, CCX series box and this is 250 Hertz. And I can show you that a single box in the center right here at that 11 foot trim height at standing height on the stage, this is the pattern at 250 Hertz. So we can see we get spill right here and then we don't have as much right here. So we actually have 9 dB less at 250 Hertz right here at the rear of the stage. So you think if, if your pastor's up on stage talking, you're having trouble with feedback, uh, you can help eliminate that by having speakers that are going to have less of that come on the stage. Or if it's just a, a, a plain old mic'd up piano, anything that's on stage where you don't want stuff coming back in the microphones, uh, that is how feedback happens. It's hearing itself. So the less we can have on the stage, the better. So now let's look and see what that looks like across an entire system. So this is that original design I had, non-cardioid. So this is at 250 hertz. And then we swap it and put in the cardioid ones and we see how much the stage cleans up right here. So I think it is well worth it um, if you had the budget for it to invest in that. Again, just a single amp channel. Uh, I think it is helpful. And moving back to this design, now viewing it through the lens of spill. Again, I chose cardioid subs so that we could have less spill on the stage itself, but also this sub not spilling backwards into the audience. So you're not hearing subs coming at different times. So we're comparing here a cardioid sub setup versus a non-cardioid. So we have actually have a bigger discrepancy in the SPL at the back and we have more at the stage and we're able to reverse it if we use cardioid setup because it's propelling energy forward. Granted, these subwoofers, um, if you use a dual 18 in regular and a dual 18 cardioid, we do lose a little bit of efficiency because some of the SPL loss in the enclosure. So if you want max SPL at all costs, don't go this route. Uh, but if you want a cleaner low end overall, I think it is a great solution. All right, a recap, I want you to be mindful of sight lines. That means using small boxes and getting them up as high as you can within a low ceiling venue. I want you to think about subdividing. So anytime you can compartmentalize an audience zone, and this might be dictated just from geometry, it could be dictated from a seating plan, but subdivide it, then find the right speaker that fits and covers that zone perfectly. 
And again, I like the CCX series since I've got four different coverage patterns to work with with each driver size or the, the 12 inch and 15 inch. And then lastly, manage your spill. It's important to think about where we are putting sound, but it's almost as important to think about, well, where is sound coming from the box going where I don't want it? So using cardioid options, as well as being able to know the directivity and using boxes, even if they're not cardioid, that have really good pattern control is very important. All right, my name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love helping you get amazing results out of any sound system. I would love for you to comment below with any other strategies you've used to make sure your gigs or venues with low ceilings sound great. Thank you so much. See you next time.